Always pray and never give up. This is our second week of the Lutheran Church of Australia and New Zealand season of prayer for renewal in the church. I don't know about you, but I think our denomination in Australia is in a season where this prayer, this kind of prayer, this persistent prayer, pressing into the Lord, worshipping him and seeking his good for those gathered around the gospel in this country is indeed worthwhile and necessary right now. Uh, to give credit where it's due, I'll probably end up mostly um, sharing today out of some of the resources provided for this, okay? Um, so if it's a really brilliant sermon, uh, it's probably not me. Um, if it's a horrible sermon, I can blame somebody else. Uh, Father God, we pray that you open our hearts and minds to your word. Lead us with your Holy Spirit always and renew the church. Help us to pray and to never give up, to not lose heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, did you hear about the sheep that climbed over the mountain instead of going around it? It get ready to groan. It followed the path of fleece persistence. <laughs> Terrible joke, isn't it? In fact, I put that in there. That wasn't even in these notes. <laughs> that, that's how bad it is. Or, you know, I'll get to the next one later. Always pray and don't lose heart. Uh, look, we, we look at the state of the world around us and it is easy to lose heart. We look at the, the path of our own journey and, and we sometimes lose heart. Uh, have I really gone all these years down this track uh, and for what? We look at the world. Sometimes we can feel the same way if we look at the church, if we look at our families, if we look at ourselves, it can feel like life has defeated us. We, we have lost heart. Sometimes it leaves us in the Christian life as just barely going through the motions. It's all gritted teeth, sheer willpower, and yet no joy. I'll pull in this second one here. I used to suffer from depression, but going through hard work, persistence, and never giving up, I now suffer from anxiety as well as depression. You know, it sometimes feels like no matter what we do, just the situation keeps getting worse. And Jesus got to the point of this parable right at the start in telling this, always pray never give up. That's the point. And Jesus gives the point before he even starts this parable of uh, what we sometimes in Luke 18 refer to as the parable of the persistent widow. Because Jesus knew his disciples would need it. Times would be tough and they needed this point given, the, given to them right at the start. I mean, no one sails through life without encountering despair, confusion and loneliness of losing heart. Yet Jesus says, keep going, don't give up. But if that's all we hear him say, it's not going to help us. It's like that useless saying, if you can't find a way to be persistent, keep trying. Well, what's that going to help? And if that's all we hear out of this parable, then it makes our despair run deeper if you've lost heart, either now or some other time, you don't need more commands to keep trying harder. You actually need the gospel, don't we all? That encouraging word that Jesus has already done what needs to be done. We have relationship with Father God. The way is clear. Because if we tried to be good enough holy enough, free of sin enough, we'd get worse and worse and worse. That's the paradox. 
Paul in Romans says, what I do not want to do, that's the thing I do. What I don't want to do, I do. It's a bit of a tongue twister and he, he sort of unpacks that in Romans 8. That's the paradox of trying hard. The results get worse. And yet not trying to earn God's favour, but relaxing into the gospel of Jesus Christ, which declares that all the accomplishment that had to be achieved has been done already. It's given to us as a gift. Relaxing into that brings freedom. It brings joy. It gives us the space to, I don't know, look at this blank canvas that we've stuffed up and put new colour onto it, paint it with nice brushes, get some texture, pattern, depth, and make those colours of life pop. Mm, that wasn't in the notes. Let's, let's put ourselves into Jesus' parable here. Um, we think of a courtroom situation, the parable of the persistent widow and a judge. It's nothing like the structured court system we have today. Um, justice was often heard, cases were heard, and justice uh, pronounced in the gates of the town or the city, the public place where people leave or come in from their daily business living in that town. And there'd be a crowd pressing in around the, the judge. The strongest would push their way to the front. They'd demand their cases were heard. Those who could pay the biggest bribe to the judge's agent would be the ones to get attention. The widow in this picture is powerless. In the Jewish culture of her day, to be a widow means to be legally vulnerable there on after. And if she was a widow without a child, particularly without a son, knowing it was a patriarchal Jewish culture that she lived in, if she didn't have a son, then her future was actually in peril. Her well-being was in peril. Social security was non-existent. And that's the context in which this widow keeps pressing in and not giving up for the judge to hear her case. Jesus' point here is about what God is like, and he makes that point by illustrating what God is not like. This judge couldn't care less about the widow. But because she keeps persisting, keeps persisting, it bothers him. And it's not so much the nuisance of it for the judge, what's it matter to, to him in a position of power and prestige. Perhaps it's more her case pricking his conscience He's speaking the law of God about what he should be doing. But he's sick of it. So he hears her case just to make it go away. That's Jesus' illustration of the corrupt judge who can be bribed, who sits in power and prestige. And the point he makes is that your father in heaven is nothing like that. When you come to him in prayer, you can press into him in prayer and know that he joyfully hears you. He loves to have you confide in him, rely on him, talk to him, share with him. And he loves even more for you to hear him through scripture, through his word, through the Holy Spirit through the encouragement of fellow Christians speaking truth to build you up. God loves you to hear his voice. God does not need to be badgered or bribed. He's not worn down by our constant harping on. We don't have to pester him into answering our prayers. I want to share a prayer I once prayed I don't know how many years ago now it was, early-ish in our marriage. Um, and uh, it was sometime after my dad had been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. It might have been a couple of years after that. And um, 
Karen and I had lost a couple um, pregnancies, a couple babies by then. Um, we weren't to know yet that there'd be a couple more yet that would go the same way. And I prayed to God that, um, Lord, just let my dad be around long enough so that our, grand, our, our child is old enough to tell their grandfather that they love him. That was a heartfelt prayer. Well, those of you who know our story will know that, I don't know if this was a couple of years ago, we had dad for four more years um, and a couple more children got fast tracked straight to heaven. There'll be four of them there one day when we meet them. Um, and, you know, sometimes we ask for something that the father cannot give or something that the father chooses to not give. I've learned to be okay with that. God knows best and that's okay. Sometimes we do ask for something the father cannot give and in a far more pertinent example and probably the ultimate illustration of this and not just an illustration but the point of all of this is that Jesus entered into that experience in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed, Lord, get this cup away from me. No, that's a bit of a paraphrase. But basically, he did not want to endure that cup. And yet, not my will, but yours. And that was a prayer. That first part of it was a prayer the Father couldn't answer with a yes. Instead, Father God gives the full cup of sin, wrath and fury for his son, his beloved son to drink because the Father loves you. And because the Father loves you, Jesus stayed the course right through for you and that's the gospel. The gospel was indeed horrible and ugly, terrible for Jesus and beautiful for us and yet the love of God, the love of Jesus for you drove him. Still does. Always will. And so when we pray the Lord's Prayer, it's <laughs> we go through the motions and yet if we could see with our eyes unveiled into the spiritual realm that when we pray through the Lord's Prayer, if we could see how disruptive that prayer is to the nations of the world where injustice reigns and corruption and greed and rife, strife are rife, that prayer prayed by faithful Christians continues to change the world. Always pray and never give up. Amen.